Theater viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Got our 2002 Ford Escape. Escape, if I say it correctly. It's got the big 3 0 in it and money lights on, of course. Uh, and it has a classic P1506, or at least that's the only code stored in it now. So that's for uh, idle overspeed error or idle air control valve error. And evidently, she's had this at uh, the shop she goes to about three times. She's fed up, she says, wants it fixed. Uh, I see some new jiggly bits under the hood, so let's have a look and see what's really wrong with this car. So just general observation, because I like to do that first. I can see somebody's been in this area. You can tell by the new idle air control valve and the excessive amount of zip ties uh, holding the throttle cable on. Uh, looks like it's got a new EGR valve uh, solenoid. Um, I see some, uh, some tape. They got some vacuum hoses all taped up. And... Uh, what not, and that's about all I see. Looks like the EGR valve is newer, relatively new, because I see that's got nuts and bolts holding it on now, instead of the factory ones there, so it must be they broke off. And I see some more uh, tape down here and whatnot. So typically, generally, this code, uh, we can look up code criteria, but essentially the 1506s, the ECM doesn't have the ability to control the idle anymore. And this lady ma did make the comment to me that when she drives down the road, her pointer stays above the one. So the, the tack never goes below a thousand RPMs, essentially. So uh, a couple things cause that, uh, you know, faulty idle air control valve, um, you know, vacuum leaks, uh, things of that sort. So uh, let's check it out. We'll look at some data. We'll see where things are running. Uh, these are just two wire idle air control valves. So uh, easy peasy, we just unplug them, it should slam shut and it should idle very, very low at that point and we can verify function of the idle air control valve, make sure it's working and then if it is, then we'll just, like I say, we'll look at some data and we'll see, you know, if it just has a vacuum leak or whatever, it shouldn't be too difficult. Enhance, enhance. So I've got some data here for us up on the screen. Uh, just key on engine off. This pig got 218k on it, lots of miles. Uh, so one thing that I want to look at are fuel trims. Uh, let's just sort these out by ABCs. So we have our fuel trims, short term, long term, uh, both banks. Idle air control valve faults. So it's going to tell us if there's any circuit faults, and then we're going to see where the idle air control valve is running. Uh, we're probably not going to need that one. So let's just go ahead and start it up here. Let's do a cold start. See what happens. trying to bring the idle down but it's not being successful. I think they normally run in a 20 to 30 percentile on a, on a good engine. Um, I can see our short term fuel trim is running a little on the high side, not horrible but hitting that 10 percent mark there. I'm gonna take and unplug the idle air control valve just for poop and laughter. You guys stay right here. All right, so that's idle air control valve is completely unplugged at this point. Or you can shut it off. Must be the door switches are bad. Let's see here. I grabbed us annoyed light. I don't want to be annoyed. Uh, but we're just going to take and plug it in here where the idle air control valve goes, just like an injector. I just want to make sure our ECM does have control. Uh, that should light up here, technically speaking. Alright, so key on engine off. Um, you, you see it went to open idle air control valve. Let's just go ahead and start it. Here the idle pick up. Or it's 
continue to bring it down. Now, what do I know? Let me look at data. Let me just see where it's at here. So it already dropped back uh, 89% because we had it running too long. Uh, let's go ahead and shut it off. All right, so we learned a couple things pretty quick. I got one of these. Uh, gonna take, we're going to unplug the mass airflow. And we're going to do, we're going to go old school. Whoa, it's too early in the morning, fella. Let's do this. Unhook that. Let's take this tube off here. Been a lot of screwdrivers and a lot of fiddly bits here under the hood. A lot of people have been playing. Playing doctor. Remember playing that when you were a kid? <laughs> uh, yeah, the stories I could tell. But we try to keep it kid friendly. Let's get this thing off here. Quick visual inspection there. Do do who's been in here playing with you? Not me. Right, I'm gonna start it up. Uh, it's probably gonna go through some stalling fits here for a minute, but let me just just bear with me here, folks. Let me find the keys. Hold on. Start that up uno more at a time. Come on. Come on. Just grab it. I want to make sure it's not pulling any bypass there past that valve. Idler control valve path is in the top of the throttle body. There's a slot there. I, I don't feel it pulling air past it, so that tells me the idler control valve is going shut. Alright, so we, we don't have a huge vacuum leak, but being that we got the tube off now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and check for vacuum leaks. Uh, we'll probably just use the old Evoca Smoka. We'll get her smoked up. I'll put this uh, tube back on like this. We'll plug off the little hole here. We'll stick our bladder in there and then we'll smoke the intake, see where it's leaking. If it is leaking, uh, just kind of verify some things here. Just gathering some quick data that's easy to do. Uh, I think you guys seen me do it in the past before by plugging off the throttle body. If we have a massive vacuum leak, usually the engine will continue to run. I think I showed you that on some map sensor engines before, but this, this one does stall out immediately, which if it was gonna to continue to run, you would have to have a huge vacuum leak. So I plugged off our little hole here. I had a little rubber cap I stuck in there. Like I say, we'll just stick this on temporarily. Tighten up this screw, I'll get a little ratchet. Uh, we're gonna use our red line easy intake. This thing works great, it's like a little blood pressure cuff. You stick it in there <laughs> and let it grow. And it plugs up the hole for us, look at that. And then we hook our smoker on here and then we can smoke the intake. We fired up the hookah, the OTC leak tamer. Smoking machine. So we're going to let her fill up here. We're probably, where's this thing go? That goes to a valve cover. We're going to have to plug that off. Let me shut her down here for a minute. I'll get this plugged off and then we'll start identifying all our leaks. There we go. Man. She's going to have a lot of them, I'll tell you that. A lot of little leaks make one big leak. Uh, find a flashlight. 
Let the good time smoke. Oh, what do we got down here? He's smoking like a banshee down there. Holy crap biscuit, fella. We're smoking everywhere. Got a big smoker there. Looks like the uh, fuel pressure regulator is smoked big time. Is it the hose that hooks to it? No. Holy crap, lady. I gotta shut the smoke down. We got too much smoke. <laughs> uh, let me, uh, this one's for the fuel pressure regulator. They got that teed over there. That's in the bottom. That goes to the vacuum tank, which the vacuum tank here is all melted. And it looks like that's all super glued together. All right, awesome. Just want to plug this off. We'll leak up there. We got more leaks down here. Just got to see where everything's blasted. This thing's got so many vacuum leaks, it's hard to. Keep track of everything here. Oh, wow. That's blown out of every orifice on this thing. The little bit that's leaking around the EGR valve, now that's quite normal. Um, it's leaking out of the PCV hose, it's fuel pressure regulator. We gotta see if that vacuum tank's any good. Like I say, the whole back end of it's melted right together. Uh, let me start kind of temporarily plugging up some of these holes, and then we'll make the big grocery list. Yeah, this PCV elbow down here is split right in half for the fresh air side of it. This one broke right off. This one right here. The whole back side of it's split out. Uh, like I say, we're going to have to start temporarily plugging these off. Uh, this one back here, you know, this elbow, obviously it's not the right elbow. They've got this all rigged up. Um, get these all plugged off. Uh, looks like the PCV must come around. Yeah, it does right here. I can see it blasting out of the PCV hose down here. Underneath the intake. Holy crap, biscuit lady. Uh, like I say, the fuel pressure regulator, the top of it's rotted out with diaphragms just blasting all around that. Alright, let me figure this out here. So I've got most everything plugged off now. <laughs> the front elbow here, like I say, elbow is split out at the front valve cover. Uh, this nipple back here where they've got the vacuum lines all rigged up, uh, that's leaking. I don't know if you guys can see this vacuum canister. Now it's not going to be leaking out of this that we can see because there's a check valve but this whole, I don't know if they melted a coke bottle in there to seal it up but that, you know, this whole vacuum reservoir has been uh, melted. <laughs> um, of course, you know, if this is leaking this will only create a leak once the engine's running uh, be, you know, because of this check valve. Now we can, if we want to see, I guess, we could pull out unhook it here. See there's no smoke coming out of that vacuum hose. We could unhook it at this side of the check valve. We should have smoke here. Uh, no, what did we do? We unhooked this vacuum line, didn't we? Yeah, we plugged that vacuum line off. Awesome. Uh, we've got so much stuff to save over right now, it's pathetic. Uh, let's take the old Avoca smoker. I'm going to just stick it right in the hole here to see if this vacuum tank is leaking. <laughs> My head's in a cloud of smoke, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like the old uh, vacuum tank is actually sealed. Look at that. Melted. Sealed. Still works. So that's good. 
one less thing we got to worry about. So we can just kind of stuff this back in the corner. I doubt the lady's going to fix this car. Uh, to be honest with you. It looks like it's being near rotted in half, so I think she's trying to get it inspected. Um, but we'll just give the grocery list and use this as a learning lesson if you're chasing down your 1506. Things to look for, biggest thing to look for is vacuum leaks, uh, which we have a plethora of. Lots and lots of vacuum leaks. Um, you know, every hose on this thing is pretty well charred. And, uh, and leaking. Now some leaks are tolerable, others are not. So at this point, I guess I have to kind of come up with an estimate. The PCB hose down here where it runs under the intake, uh, that thing is blasting pretty good underneath the intake manifold. Uh, like I say, the fuel pressure regulator is pretty well shot. And I'm curious to know if the fuel pressure regulator because that's so bad, maybe that's why our fuel trim numbers aren't as off as much because our fuel pressure is elevated. Uh, that diaphragm is blown right out of it. Uh, it. Looks like the whole top of it's rusted off. So I'm curious to know if, you know, fuel pressure is overcoming, um, you know, vacuum leaks in the sense that's why we're not getting, you know, lean codes. Uh, but we have a ton of vacuum leaks. Ooh, look at that, that's a big thick steamroller right there. All right, folks, well, I put it back together. Uh, I'll get her around an estimate. Uh, like I said, this whole vehicle is pretty, pretty rough condition, uh, you know, mechanic. I'm not even sure if I could put it on the lift without it, you know, breaking in half. So uh, we won't, I'll give her the option. Uh, I see they've already ran it through, uh, passed it for inspection, of course, uh, the other shop. Uh, but, you know, a lot of shops that do work similar to this, you know, have no problem passing a car for inspection that clearly shouldn't be on the road. So. I'll see if she just wants the engine light fixed. Uh, I may have been wrong on that fuel pressure regulator. Went to put the hose back on it and it's clearly the wrong size hose. I didn't notice that until I went to put it together. So uh, I'm gonna double check that and see, uh, I'm gonna put a vacuum pump on it and see if it is leaking or if it was just leaking around that hose so bad it was tricking me. Uh, I didn't realize that when I pulled it off. So that may have been my mistake there, but I do see the snap ring around it is pretty well rotted. So. Uh, I'm pretty certain I saw that leaking around there, but I am going to double check that while I quote that job out. Uh, the PCV hose is another big leaker in the front uh, elbow up here, and then a lot of the other hoses that are, you know, rigged up and taped together and stuff would be just a simple matter of, you know, replacing the hoses proper and kind of running them where they need to be and just unrigging it. Uh, the engine sounds terrible, sounds like time change, but already come through the cover, but. Uh, I give her the option. It's not uh, choice isn't up to me. It's up to the customer. So we'll see what they want to do. I'll give her my advice on uh, the whole thing and what I see, and uh, we'll take it from there. Hey, good news. She said, "Fix it." And as you can see, I got some jiggly bits from Napper, not a sponsor. We got a new PCV valve. Uh, we got some super crap Dorman parts, whose logo happens to be a wallet with wings on it. How ironic. Uh, I just needed one PCV elbow out of here. Now, their rubber products are absolute garbage, uh, so I would recommend not using them. If you can get the OE stuff, which I couldn't have for several days, so I had to take the one elbow out of here. They're cheap enough. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. And then again, the... Uh, PCV hose wherever it went uh, the one that runs on the back of the engine uh, back here also got a Dorman one uh, I know and then I just got rid of all the cob jobbing that the other shop did all the other you know split hoses that were uh, crusty and crappy and uh, you know hard as a rock and some of the elbows uh, even some of these elbows they had big splits in the bottom of them I don't know if this is one of them yeah this is one of them you know it was broke right open uh, so lots of stuff there. I hooked the Evoca smoker back to it. Got, got rid of the hose that they wasted more tape on uh, than they would have just, you know, buying the hose. Uh, Napa sells the stuff all day long, folks, if you need a roll of it. <laughs> They've got it. Oh, yeah, here's the other part. So that stuff is on. I re-smoked it. I put the vacuum reservoir back where it belongs. If you did work like this and you work in a shop, you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm usually not one to belittle other shops because frankly, they bring me a lot of business. However, seeing what was done on this thing, you're a disgrace to the automotive 
industry. Either learn how to do it right and do it better or get a different job. I typically don't say stuff like that, folks, but some of this stuff is just disgusting. And this is why people don't like going to shops. All right, I apologize. I should not have said that, but it's just sometimes I shouldn't. I'm kind of like Donald Trump sometimes. You know, like when he gets to the end of his daily briefings and then they let him talk on his own, you know, the fun part. <laughs> I'm kind of like that sometimes. Uh, long story short, like I say, the elbow, got the new elbow on it down here, replaced these hoses, of course, replaced all the other vacuum hoses, put the reservoir back on its bracket. Uh, it would have been my preference to get an OEM, you know, at the salvage yard, actual vacuum harness, uh, but that's not, that's not an option. Uh, it's downpouring rain out there today and I couldn't go to the junkyard, uh, nor can my Ford dealer get parts in any reasonable amount of time. So I ran uh, new vacuum hoses where they needed to be, only took a couple minutes double check that fuel pressure regulator. I was right, it was uh, the hose that was leaking. The hose was too big. Uh, installed a new PCV valve. Now free tip Friday for you. If you're doing a PCV valve on one of these, they're easy enough to yank out with, you know, a pair of pliers and get under the intake. You can get them out, get them in is the tricky part. If you wanna get it in, just use a piece of rubber hose, stick the PCV in there. You can slip it right under the intake, quarter turn it, lock it in. So free tip for you. Uh, I would have recorded this process, but I've been on and off a couple jobs uh, throughout the day, and we had to wait till the afternoon to get uh, some of the parts from Napper. So, uh, just getting it put back together, and we're gonna fire this baby up. Got rid of all their zip tie crap here on the throttle cable. We're gonna do this. I did clean the mass airflow while I had it out, because it was pretty filthy. So I just took and sprayed that out. So I had this hose off. Now we shouldn't have to double check it and show you for vacuum leaks because if we look at scan data, it should prove. Because remember the idle air control valve was going all the way shut. It was down to like what, a couple of 2%, 8%, something like that. So I'm thinking in the mid 20s, I'd be happy. And uh, our fuel trim numbers should reflect everything. And technically the desired versus actual engine RPM, it should be able to control it at this point. And if we unplug the idle air control valve, so providing nobody's messed with the uh, minimum airflow screw down here, our idle should drop down. All right, so before we even look at data, let's just fire this baby up. We find the key here. Well, it does sound pretty horrible. There's something rattling over here. Gosh, manifolds are leaking. Let's just... Oh, wait now. All right, let's go look at some scan data before we get choked out. All right, what do we know? What do we see? Desired RPM is 740. We're at about 760. Idle air control valve is holding pretty steady. Let me get a pointing apparatus here. Hold on. So we're about 31%. Okay, so that's pretty decent. Our fuel trims on bank one are running a little more negative. I think we were up in the positive numbers prior, which we're, we're still, you know, within our 10% our range. Our long term looks pretty good. Uh, bank two, uh, same thing. Our long term looks pretty good. Of course, it's adjusting with short term here. Not super excited about that. Um, so I guess we can ditch those. We got less stuff on our screen. I haven't gone through and reset the keep alive memory or anything yet. So now we'll look at, uh, we know we have no idle air control valve electrical fault. So desired and actual are very close. Idle air control valves running around 30%. Let me give her a little throttle snap. Idle air control valve opens, closes back down. Let's make sure it steadies out here. Mass airflow is slightly over-reporting. Not, not horrible, but that could be where our field trip variation comes in. 
pretty happy with it. So we're just going to reset the keep alive memory so this will clear out all our fuel trims and codes and everything like that. So we'll get that done. That's been continued. Now we shouldn't have any more codes stored other than a P1000 basically stating that uh, you know drive cycle's not done. That's what we have P1000. So Okay, so we're good. We'll go back home. Go home. ET phone home. There we go. And there you have it, folks. Your P1506 and your Ford Escape 3.0. Uh, lots of Ford models. Let's cover. Um, look at the code set criteria. See what see what the computer is seeing or see what parameter it's looking at to determine, you know, this this code number. In this case, it's saying, you know, we have the idle air control valve. Okay, all that is in this case as it is in a lot of cases, is, is a controlled vacuum leak. You know, it's letting metered air bypassing, you know, uh, the throttle plate to maintain a certain idle. And once it gets to a point that the idle air control valve can't control it, can't get it low enough, you know, it can't block, you know, it's, it's closed. It blocked off all the vacuum, the engine's still idling high. Uh, the computer says, I'm done, turn on the light. And that's what it does. So. Uh, does that mean the idle air control valve is fault? Maybe. Uh, test it. Simple enough to do. Is my idle air control valve opening and closing on a Ford? A lot of times you just take them off, key on engine off, just clunk, it'll pop open, you know, 50%, shut the key off, unplug it, whatever, you know, slams back shut. So, a uh, pretty easy test. Can the ECM control it? You know, we could have put a scope on it, could have put a meter on it, could have put a blinking test light on it, you know, and you would have seen, you know, can it control it? Sure. Uh, if that, if it has control, you see on scan data, your idle air control valve is at, you know, less than 10% or, you know, less than 5%, you know, this baby's closed and I'm trying to open it. Then start looking for outside vacuum leaks, you know, whether it's EGR, whether it's in the purge solenoid, in the EVAP, brake booster, um, you know, the, the vacuum reservoir, the heater system. I mean, this thing could have vacuum leaks everywhere. It's a lot of vacuum controlled devices on this. And then just fix those and then go back and see you know, see if it resolved your problem. Uh, the other vacuum leak you can have that's not external is your actual PCV valve. Uh, the PCV could be pulling too much crankcase vacuum. Let's say it's, you know, the little spring donger in here stuck open or however it regulates itself. This box is empty, not even a good example. Uh, we probably got it down here somewhere, it's right here. You know, people take them out, they shake them. Well, if it shakes, it's good. Well, I don't know that. It's eight bucks, put a new one in, <laughs> you know. So uh, go about it, you know, just with a, a logical approach. Uh, smoke it if you got the ability. If you got them, smoke them. You know, smoke it up. Look the evoke a smoke up. See where this thing's leaking. There are acceptable leaks. Throttle shafts leak. EGR diaphragm style EGR valves they leak. Intake manifold runner control valves they leak. There's normal leaks that are tolerable uh, on a lot of engines. So uh, don't get fooled by that. Don't you know go chasing little pinholes. Uh, you know, look for the big smoking like it was on this one. Uh, it was easier to make a list of what it wasn't leaking out of. And I probably spoke too soon when I said that you shouldn't be doing this and you're a disgrace to the automotive community because some people don't have a good teacher. Uh, they don't have a good, uh, you know, mentor to, to follow behind or to, you know, guide them along the way. But if you're using zip ties, to rig up throttle cables and you're using tape to fix vacuum hoses yeah it might get you out of a pinch but if you're running a professional shop i know what shop this came from their labor rate is almost the same as mine the shop's twice the size you know you, you shouldn't be doing that backyard hillbilly diy go for it do what you got to do you got a customer coming in your shop paying for this don't do it just refuse the job. There's no shame in saying, I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what the problem is. You know, you might be great at brakes and exhaust and, you know, ball joints. Stick to that. You know, there is no shame in saying, I don't know how to fix this. You need to have it, you know, I either need to educate myself and then fix it, or I need to send it to another shop or have, you know, another, you know, my other buddy that works at the shop, you know, have him look at it. So anyways, so I apologize if I hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not a feeling hurter. I'm trying to be respectful. So why don't you be respectful and go down there and leave a respectful comment or a bad one, whatever you want to do. I got broad shoulders. Uh, so go ahead and do that while you're down there. Subscribe, ring the bell. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.